If your favorite brand was a person, what do you think they would be like? Debonair? Eccentric? Smug? Recently, the internet came to the conclusion that the fast food brand Wendy's is best personified as a smug anime-esque girl, which in turn set off the creative side of social media with an explosion of fan art. Brand personification isn't really a new thing, though. Characters like the Michelin Man, Mr. Peanut, and Tony the Tiger have been around since the early 20th century. Smug Wendy's massive popularity isn't a new trend either. Japan has a whole culture dedicated to mascots. So what's the appeal in Smug Wendy's? What makes the Wendy's persona so well received? So popular? So rhetorically effective? Because advertising is a form of rhetoric, let's conduct a rhetorical analysis and uncover the answers to these probing questions. As you can probably guess, the first major rhetorical device at play here is personification, or prosopopeia as the Greeks coined it. And you know, if the Greeks coined it, then personifying stuff definitely isn't a new thing. In advertising, personification is used to make a brand more relatable and tangible for consumers. And yet, while lots of brands can personify themselves, not all of them gain as much attention, or should I say notoriety, as Wendy's persona. We need to go deeper! Let's take an actual look at a few of Wendy's tweets. Our beef is way too cool to ever be frozen. Your beef is frozen and we all know it. Y'all know we laugh at your slogan fresh never frozen right, like you're a real joke. Sorry to hear you think that, but you're wrong. We've only ever used fresh beef since we were founded in 1969. So you deliver it raw on a hot truck. Where do you store cold things that aren't frozen? Y'all should give up. McDonald's got you guys beat with the dough breakfast. You don't have to bring them into this just because you forgot refrigerators existed for a second there. Wendy's 4 for 4 is a deal. Hardy's 4 for 4 dollars is 10 times better. Amen. See staff, Hardy's knows, you get a burger, chicken sandwich, a drink, and fries, way better than Wendy's. Well let's see how Wendy's feels. Which 4 for 4 is better? We usually prefer the original to a knockoff, but hey, you do you. Just because you were first doesn't mean you're best. Tell us the fourth person to walk on the moon without googling it. <laughs> oh, lol, they blocked us. Wendy's, how much does a Big Mac cost? Your dignity? Wendy's, I've tasted dirt better than your burgers. Step it up. No, you haven't. Also, please stop eating dirt. Five for four dollars, because five is better than four. Wendy's, what are you firing back? Edible food. Wendy's, my friend wants to go to McDonald's. What should I tell him? Find new friends. Wendy's, can you find me the nearest McDonald's? Here we see why people love Wendy's persona so much. Her tone of voice. Let me elaborate. Take, for example, this infamous exchange between Hardee's and Wendy's. The crux of this sick roast is when Wendy's takes on Hardee's first is not best comment by asking Hardee's if they can name the fourth person on the moon, to which Hardee's aptly responded by blocking Wendy's. This is called anti-strophon, when a redder turns their opponent's arguments against them. A lot of Wendy's conversations in general are built on refutation, where they negate their opponents with logic, evidence, or discrepancies in the opposing argument. These two major rhetorical devices combine with two other rhetorical devices called asteism and epiplexis. Asteism is the Greek word for refined irony, or polite mockery, that stylizes their severe criticism of opponents, epiplexis. With all of these rhetorical devices, Wendy's has created a tone of voice that is both persuasive and unique to their brand and their smug persona. Of course, when I say unique, what I really mean is controversial. See, roasting in the culture around it is built on humorously mocking or humiliating someone with a well-timed joke, diss, or comeback, right? That's where the element of controversy comes in. By engaging in roast culture, Wendy's is disregarding some of the ethical norms in marketing. We treat everyone, including competitors, as you would like to be treated. Don't spread misinformation by making false or misleading claims about competitors. Even Wendy's own code of ethics wants employees to treat any persons or entities with respect and professionalism. They even have a bit that tells employees to be objective in their writing and to think before you speak and be proud of what you say and write. Well, I'm sure whoever's running their Twitter is certainly proud of what they've written. 
So, Wendy's has a unique face and a controversial voice for themselves, but how effective is all the sassy rhetoric they're putting out there? Well, after their infamous exchange with Twitter user ThuggyD on January 3rd of this year, their follower count has nearly doubled. Users feel more comfortable engaging with the brand too. I mean, just look at Carter Wilkinson and his retweets for Nuggets deal with Wendy's. In terms of Smug Wendy's effect on sales and customer satisfaction, it's still a little too early in the year to see if being smug is actually a great sales booster. Otherwise, if being blocked by other fast food Twitters, causing Twitter users to delete or change accounts, and having people ask to be roasted is any measure of real rhetorical effectiveness, then sure, they're pretty successful so far. So, we figured out what makes Smug Wendy's tick with audiences. Personifying a brand makes it more tangible, especially with social media, and giving her an original, humorous, if not also controversial voice garners her attention and the audience's favor. So what? What's the takeaway from this analysis then? Should all brands attempt to be this smug and sassy? Well, although other businesses should take note on being relatable and humorous, Wendy's magic rhetorical formula is something that's pretty unique to them, and probably can't be fully duplicated even if you tried. That aside, customers still expect businesses to maintain some professionalism. Even Wendy's knows when it's time to set aside the smug persona and act like a proper business. In conclusion, before you start straight up copying Wendy's, have a word from our sponsor. I'm Michael Jordan. Stop it. Get some help. McDonald's? Eh, I've seen better.